it's been a while, but it's me, B, and welcome back to my channel. And today we're going to do cakes and cults. Um, but I'm gonna be a little vulnerable. I'm gonna talk about kind of what got me interested in cults in the first place. And that was my own personal experience with a religious group that I belong to. Um, and this wasn't much of a choice. <laughs> I actually grew up in this religious group. I was um, baptized into it and I pretty much was in it for most of my life. So, <laughs> um, as I got older though and started making my own decisions and meeting people from other faiths and other belief systems, I've kind of like come to my own conclusion as far as what um, I believe. And I'm sorry for the ums, it's been a while since I've done this. And so I'm going to talk a little bit about this group. I'm going to avoid naming this group only because I don't think they'll come after me or anything. But I still know some people in the faith that still believe the, the work that they do, whatever. That's not my concern. Like, that's not my life. I'm not going to judge them for it. But, I, you know, the last thing I want to do is, like, make these people feel uncomfortable or make certain people feel uncomfortable because this is what they choose to believe. So I'm going to be making a chocolate cake. Um, got this from Minimalist Baker. If you are vegan and you haven't used any Minimalist Baker recipes, I implore you to do so. They are really easy. Um, that's what they pride themselves on is that they try to be minimal with like the ingredient list and everything. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started. I'm gonna mix my wets and then sift in my dries and tell you about my experience. Um, so I grew up in this group and uh, from a very young age, I was kind of taught like where the belief system came from. And you guys are gonna be able to Google just something that I say and go, oh, that's what she's talking about. Anyway, so the belief began because this woman when she was a young girl, suffered a traumatic brain injury. And as a result of that traumatic brain injury, um, it was believed that she had the ability to prophesy. And uh, people experienced when they were with her miraculous things. She would like suddenly be superhuman. Um, she would, you know, uh, make predictions. Uh, she kind of just did things that people couldn't really explain either as far as like, oh, how did she, you know, how did she know all this? Like there was an instance where um, she was in the middle of giving a sermon and she lifted this like 20 pound, and she was a very feeble woman, lifted this like 20 pound Bible with her with her one hand and like was just staring straight into heaven and was just prophesying. Um, she married a man that believed in her ability and together they formed the church. And the church was based on a couple of things. One, they believed that the end of the world was nigh. Um, they actually believed that the end of the world was super soon. And I'm so sorry, this is noisy. <laughs> uh, they believe the end of the world was super soon, but because uh, the end of the world didn't happen um, and people made fun of them for it, they were like, oh, that just means that we weren't ready. Like God's saying that we're not ready. He, he told us that the world was ending soon to like get us ready to make us faithful, whatever. So um, it's based on that. It's based on her teachings, like almost exclusively, it's based on her teachings because the big thing that they base 
their belief system around is that God and his angels are liter like literally, like not like figuratively, they are quite literally in an actual all out war, like an actual war <laughs> against each other for the fate of humanity. Like God and his angels are in an all out, like actual <laughs> physical war to, um, to, to, to save people or bring them to hell. And hell is actually earth, um, according to what I was taught. So what I was taught is that when the end of the world happens, um, humans are gonna be taken away and they're gonna be taken to um, God's kingdom, like to heaven. And then the wicked people are going to stay here and they're going to suffer for a thousand years. And then after a thousand years, God will come and he will cleanse the earth with a holy fire. And then he will rebuild the earth um, as a paradise. And then all of the humans that he deemed worthy to take to heaven will have the option to live on this new heaven on earth um, that has been completely cleansed of evil. And doing some research on this, um, something that this theory kind of like brings about is that uh, the, the origins of evil and that evil is not originated within humans themselves, but within Satan uh, and Satan's temptations. And that all you have to do is accept Jesus and accept God and you will be a good person. Okay. So the group takes the Bible incredibly literally. And when I say incredibly literally, I mean, they pick and choose the things they want to be literal about. Um, one of which is that they go to church on Saturdays, not on Sundays, because the seventh day God rested um, according to Genesis. Now, um, what that meant for us was that we took a lot of things that were actually in the Jewish teachings also super seriously. So if you're like an Orthodox Jew, um, you're not supposed to do any work on the Sabbath and that could be as simple as opening doors. Now we don't, we didn't do that, but, um, from Friday sunset to Saturday sunset, we did not do anything that wasn't Christ centered. Um, so the whole Sabbath was from Friday sunset to Sabbath sunset. And then after that, you know, we could go back to business. The only exception being is if you were a nurse or a doctor and you had to work on the Sabbath, that was okay. Um, or like a firefighter or something, you know, something to do with like the public good. Um, and so that was one thing that we did that was a little different and weird. Um, another thing is, uh, our obsession with the end of the world. Now there was this series and I'm not going to name the series because then you can find everything out. Um, so again, just kind of <laughs> keeping this as vague as I deem fit. Um, but the series that they would have us watch, I mean, all of the time this was this was like oh you guys have been good and we're gonna watch a movie and this is the movie they put on okay and it's a series it's not like one movie it's a bunch of shit <laughs> and the series nitpicks from the bible certain um certain verses um and these verses were basically saying that like or at least this is how they interpreted it as, is that um, us, the true believers, the ones that have it right, that uh, aren't making mistakes by going to church on Sunday and drinking and smoking and stuff like us. So us good people, what, right before the end of the world, there's going to be persecution and by persecution that means that the whole world is going to try to hunt us down and kill us because they don't want to agree with our teachings and part of that is you know they're trying to say oh there's this law that's going to be passed 
that requires everyone to like worship on Sunday, which is not the true Sabbath, stuff like that. So um, to get us ready for these end of times, I am, I am not kidding you. Uh, one, they, they actually, in the guise of like a like fun like youth group, they had us go to these little uh, meetings and it was all separated by age where you learned the Bible and made friends and stuff like that. That part isn't too super weird, right? Right. Uh, the weird part, one, they wanted you eventually to memorize the entire Bible. I, I like I at one point had all of Genesis, all of Exodus memorized, um, like every verse, every single verse. And that was normal. They, it was like a weekly thing that you would get like quizzed and like memorize the Bible verses. And the reason for that being is that at the end of the world, we're not going to have our Bibles because we're going to have to run away into the mountains and hide in caves and hide in the wilderness so that we don't die. Because people are gonna hunt us down and kill us because of what we believe in. Because we have the truth and they don't. So they had us memorize all the Bible verses, every single one. And then um, they also had us uh, learn wilderness survival skills at a very young age. You know, learning how to build a fire. To a six-year-old, that's really cool. <laughs> um, but then, you know, you learn how to identify animal, animal prints. You learn how to create shelters. Like you do just basically all this wilderness training at a super, super young age. And you earn awards for it and badges for it. And there's conferences and all sorts of ways you can be involved. And, um, you know, the whole point was to, you know, keep you busy, keep you indoctrinated because, you know, the same belief systems would be uh, told to you over and over again while this is happening. And then you're memorizing the Bible. You're learning how to survive in the wilderness. They teach you how to build a tent. They teach you how to build a fire. They teach you how to hunt. They teach you how to look, how to forage. They teach you all this shit. And it's because at the end of the world, these are invaluable skills. These are the skills that will keep you alive. <laughs> so imagine being a child and being told, you know, hey, um, everyone that doesn't believe the same as you is going to try and hunt you down and kill you. Um, and the way that we're trying to help you is, is we're building a community here where you get to know everyone around you, you become friends, and you're also going to learn, <laughs> you're also going to learn how to survive in the wilderness all by yourself if need be. I, I wish I was kidding. <laughs> um... So I felt guilty all the time, ever wanting to hang out with anyone that wasn't involved in the church. I um, did get baptized because I was told that was the right thing to do. Um, we didn't do like confessions or anything like that. We were just, you know, told like to pray and ask God to forgive us and, and stuff like that. Cause it was a very like Christ centric and it was, it was more of a Protestant religion um, more than anything. And you know, it was just, it was weird. <laughs> it was just a very weird uh, experience. And, you know, as I got older and I realized, you know, like, yeah, like you do that kind of shit in Cub Scouts and you do that kind of stuff in like Girl Scouts, I guess. And, you know, you learn how to take care of yourself and assert some independence and stuff like that. But like, this was specifically created one, to keep us busy and to keep us indoctrinated. I had an activity at church every single day, except Sunday, basically. I would have meetings. I would have Bible studies. I would have camping trips. I, would have, I was not ever 
for lack of activity because I always was doing something that had to do with this church and with their beliefs. And I mean, the whole thing is just based around the fact that the earth is in a constant battle between the forces of good and evil. And we are basically instruments for that force of good. So it, it's, you know, it's also one of those uh, groups that like try to, to uh, recruit people into coming. And uh, we're, <laughs> we're constantly a force for good, trying to, you know, testify, testimony. Testimony was huge, testimony was huge, oh my God. So we're doing that and on top of that, um, we're also learning how to survive the end of the world because it's happening soon and we're going to have to run away to the mountains because people are actually gonna to try to come for us and kill us. They had dramatic reenactments, like dramatic, I guess, not even reenactments because it's not a thing that's gonna happen or will happen, but like a dramatic, like, like artistic portrayal of these people in like this dirty city that's like torn and like war torn and like it looks like like World War Three freaking happened and they're cowering and like the voiceover is just like they're being persecuted for their belief in God and because you know they believe the truth and the truth of the seventh day I I was terrified of my own soul being corrupted or anything and you know any any sort of individuality that I would try to express with hair color, hairstyle, piercings, whatever, it was immediately seen as unclean and I would have to you know change my hair whatever. I I couldn't be myself. And and just it was traumatic. It was traumatic for a child to sit there and go, I can't have any friends other than these people. And these people are the people that I'm going to have by my side when the world ends because everyone is trying to kill me. And I left the church. Um, I stopped going. I stopped <laughs> um, talking to people that used to go. Uh, that I used to go with. I actually have a few friends now that are uh, <laughs> that are ex um, members, and we talk about it, and we're like, "That was crazy, right? Like that was weird." <laughs> um, so you know, I've gotten better. I do still have some trauma surrounding, like the feelings that I have with with Christianity just like in general um, and that's something I've been working through you know and I'll never I'll never stomp on someone's um, you know right to believe in what they believe in you know pending that they're not harming anyone else in the process but uh, yeah that's <laughs> that's a very quick basic rundown of basically what I went through and this is, this is incredibly basic. I mean, I don't want to go too deep to, into it. I don't think I'm ready to go too deep into it, but uh, you know, they, you know, cults and, and um, alternate belief systems and alternate religious groups, stuff like that, they still exist and they still have members in it. And you may have a friend or a family member or someone involved. And uh, my advice, because this is what got me out, is just be a friend, listen, you know, invite them, don't let them be alone. It's kind of hard to do right now during COVID, but um, still continue reaching out and they'll see maybe one day like, hey, maybe there's something else. <laughs> so this is all nice and mixed up. It's a little watery for a batter, um, but hopefully that just means it will be really nice and uh, delicious <laughs> when I'm done. I'm gonna make the chocolate buttercream while this baby's baking and I can't wait to show you the finished result and I will be right back. And here she is. 
Um, again, not pretty. I will not make a pretty cake <laughs> to save my life. But is, is it gonna be good? Absolutely, I tasted the batter and I tasted the frosting, 10 out of 10. Um, I'm gonna put the link to the recipe in my bio. Um, I will say that the cake batter is not what you're used to. It's kind of watery. Um, and I'm noticing that's making the cake integrity not super great, to be quite honest with you. I'm gonna put a collar on this thing and put it in the freezer. Um, so, <laughs> um, yeah, that's the only thing. I would maybe add a little more flour to this, make it a little um, thicker. But other than that, it looks great. I'm excited to serve this. And of course, I'll include a picture of the slice. And then um, other than that, I think that's it. And I appreciate you all listening to my story today. And I'll be back to your regularly scheduled weird, messed up, cult <laughs> um, videos uh, here shortly. I'm going to try to keep a consistent schedule. Life got ahead of me. So, all right, be safe and do not join a cult. Till next time.